An emperor ruling from on high. He calls his own army from the sky. The time to fight is nigh. I can't, look, look, I can't deny that this is one of the best themes in Frontier. Let's talk then, my fellow hunters. Guan Zorumu, a true regal powerhouse. A king in his prime, and one of the most impressive and deadly Elder Dragons to exist. This is the Emperor Conqueror Dragon, and he has his own entire kingdom, staffed with soldiers at his beck and call, and no hunter has ever returned from facing him. But before we stare intently at this all-powerful Elder Dragon, we must first examine two other things. Okay, no, let's examine him a little bit. I will go on record here in saying that I actually think that uh, Mr. Guanzarumu is one of Frontier's most impressive designs. Yes, he has a lot of spiky bits, but in his case, he works. The color scheme is on point. The deep green uh, with the gold, the flame markings across his wing, the size and flow of his wing, uh, the uh, horns that are supposed to symbolize and take the form of a crown atop his head, which indeed they most impressively do. His mouth is normal shaped, which is rare for a frontier monster, at least in my opinion. Maybe that's just me being weird. But look, the point is, he is a good-looking dragon. I really can't point to any part of him and say, oh, maybe that should change. I really, really can't. So I am all for it there. And it would seem many people do agree. He is the third most loved monster in all of Frontier. And we're about to find out why as we dive into his fascinating ecology. And to go on the journey of this mighty beast is to first go to a journey that will lead you to the Cloud Viewing Fortress. As the name might imply, it is a mighty structure, wrought by the ancient civilization towering above. It is colossal. <laughs> Stretching as far as the eye can see, in its prime would have housed thousands. Used as a research base to, well, cloud view. Yep, it's a cloud. And more entirely to observe documents, even capture and catalogue the most capable flyers and airborne monsters, it really is a testament to the sheer both arrogance and strength of the ancient civilization that they could even think to build such a monument to what was then humanity's dominance. Well, that dominance, of course, came to an end with the Great Dragon Roar and the ruining of all they held dear, but what remained was, well their constructions. And in this case, the Cloud Viewing Fortress became home to really quite a cool little flying wyvern by the name of Egurasu. The second key component in examining our targets today. This is honestly quite, again, a very pretty looking little flying wyvern, and you can see there is just a little touch of the Elder Dragon himself here. Despite having no relation biologically, there is that little three golden prong on the wings, which is nice. There's even what looks like a little helmet on the crest adorning the eyes, the golden ridges crowning up at the top. It makes them look like soldiers. And indeed, that's what they are. See, the Cloud Viewing Fortress is home to a great nest of them. A flock. Usually timid, they keep to themselves peaceful and alone. However, they are quite capable for their size. Their ability to spew flame is incredibly impressive, and their strength is, well, ant-like in its proportion to their weight, effortlessly lifting hunters, and indeed that 
will come in handy later on. This is the Guardian Snake Wyvern, despite being a flying wyvern, and, well, it guards this fortress well, but it doesn't do it of its own volition. No, this is where Guanzarumu comes back in. Imagine a great fight, a drone fight, like Great Jagras with his jagglings, or, well, Velocidrome with his Velociprey, or indeed to use Rise, the Great Azuchi, and his Little Azuchi. That type of classic setup, but on an Elder Dragon scale. See, the Egurasu are subservient to Guanzarumu. They heed his commands, and he has many. Different roars, different pitch, different intonations. He will quite literally coordinate them on the battlefield. Such is the pride of this monster, that until you reduce him to half health, he will simply will his slaves to attack in his stead. And attack they will! Flamethrowers from on high, they will swoop from the sky, grab unwary hunters caught off guard, and quite literally send them careening off the edge of the fortress itself, falling far, falling fast, falling hard, to a guaranteed grisly end. I think this is an absolutely purely badass concept, both as an attack, but both as a fight setup. The monster with helpers, but on the extreme difficult Elder Dragon end. It's really cool, but of course, we're just getting started. To address my earlier implication, Slave might be too harsh, though they definitely unquestioningly follow orders, it is somewhat of a symbiotic relationship. One where two animals mutually gain a benefit by, well, tolerating or indeed protecting the other's existence. In this case, well, these little guys are simply allowed to continue living. They're not preyed upon by the Guanzarumu. He doesn't wipe them out. He allows them to retain their original nest that he has now claimed for himself. A new ruler in the Cloud Viewing Fortress. And indeed, what is a ruler without a throne? <laughs> Yeah, I love that this just so happens to be a throne-like rock formation, and it really works. Him just relaxed, at ease, confident, while uh, sprawled out on it as the little guys attack you is really, really fun. And indeed, the little guys do get to pick up scraps of food that he leaves, and indeed they will hunt for him, scout out, and bring back prey. It's an alright setup, really, and, well, they, in exchange, do fight for him at request, and that request is loud. One thing I should mention about Guanzarumu is his roar is legend. I'm talking louder than Laviente. You know, the largest monster? At least, in contention for such, but like, look at the size difference. A normal kind of Elder Dragon-y size and shape versus Laviente. <laughs> Louder! I- what? Imagine having to sustain that. High-grade earplugs don't even come close. You have to go beyond. In any case, then, we have the setup, the battlefield, the army, and the commander, and battle, indeed, is joined. And what a battle it is. Again. A lovely theme, and I am a sucker for epic vocals mixed into the track. It really does set the tone. It can fly fast, it can fly with serious force. Those spreading wing membranes are very indeed capable. It has powerful claw attacks, slams, earth-breaking hits, and the general physicality you would come to expect from a high-tier 
frontier monster. Its scales are incredibly dense, hard, and resistant to all sorts of damage. They are impact absorbing too, and allow him to take all but the mightiest of blows. They are also incredibly thermally insulating, and this is, well, a good job because flame is his weapon. And not just your normal, everyday run-of-the-mill flame, though he does control great gouts of it. He has golden fire befitting of an emperor of his statue running across his very wings. He is a sight to behold, blazing in his might and blazing in his fury. As the battle rages on, his high-pitched roars contrasting with his personal deep bellow as he controls the Egirasu as they breathe fire, form spheres of wind, and generally protect their master with everything they can. The roars from this guy can, well, send you rocking backwards, flying through the air. The wave of sound is simply that powerful. It will even combine its own fire with that of its servants for destructive combo attacks. But eventually, if you weather this storm, you will reach, well, a much, much worse one. Enraged, furious, the audacity of these hunters to challenge one such as him boiling in his veins. Well, phase two begins, and with it, the dragon is truly unleashed. Flame becomes, well, just that dragon element, and the Agirasu are no longer safe, killing one effortlessly in a seething display of hate towards the hunter, they now all flee, leaving their former master to fight for himself, unaided, but aid is not needed, for in this dragon form, he is all-powerful. Up there in the top-tier echelons of Elder Dragon, just shy that Black Dragon status, there is no creature to exist that he does not have at least a chance of beating in contest. His full destruction unleashed, everything before is enhanced but now with dragon. It pumps through his flesh, his bones, his muscles, enhancing him physically. The earth shattering blows, even more so shaking the sky viewing fortress, rumbling as boulders fall away and the structure grows ever more erratic. The red flowing over him, he is so very clearly changed. His wings a crimson cloak, his horns flush with dragon, he takes on a much more sinister appearance. The Emperor corrupted, the Emperor fallen, and eventually he will fall as you face tornadoes of dragon, as you face explosive bursts of energy, as you face a dragon enhanced with speed and strength, as you face every single trick he can think of to bring you down. Eventually, it will be him that is treated to that fate. And you will write your name in the history books. But it does not end there. Guan Zorumu may be an aggressive, potently strong Elder Dragon, but he has a further form that takes it even further. Ruler Goan Zorumu is something else entirely.
an extreme Gwen Zerumu, the extreme individuals again are simply event monsters that they've turned up to 11 because they can. In his case, he takes on a very different form. Orange tinging uh, his outward appearance, the spikes gaining flush of it, the wings much more boiling like lava pattern across them, an almost mane of flame forming around his head, the eyes deep red. Uh, he is much more offensively inclined with golden energy pouring forth. And indeed, instead of fire, then, dragon, it combines them into a golden flame, which is one of the most single potent elements in the entire Monster Hunter world. And if that wasn't enough, he's even imbued his army, his Egurasu, with the ability to breathe it, albeit slightly weaker, just like him. And it really is something you do not want to face. One of the hardest challenges in all of Frontier, but also one of the most impressive sights visually. This is Guanzorumu, his kingdom, his followers, and his strength. for one, yeah, I'm all about this. As I said, visually, for Frontier, I think he's pretty damn on point. I love the idea of an Elder Dragon that has a following, a army, a little set of monsters that helps, because that's usually only reserved for the lowest tier of monsters. So turning that up to 11 is a really cool concept. Having this Emperor aesthetic in such a grand location is also wonderful too. He really, really is something quite special, and honestly, there's not much I have to complain about. There's the usual, yes, it's Frontier, so attacks are massive, huge scale, over the top as power creep goes on as it is ultimately an MMO. But taking this guy, toning him for the main series, and giving him a new lease of life, I think would work really well. He offers an experience that simply isn't found in the mainline games, and that's very much to his advantage. So that's the uh, Emperor Dragon. So potent, well, even uh, the weather around the field of battle will warp and change as his anger grows and his energy is outputted. And you know things get real when a monster can change the weather. That's pretty much reserved for the oh my god help level of threat. So what do you guys think of him? What do you want? Or I guess not want? Let me know. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and indeed also let me know if there's a particular frontier monster you want to hear more about. But until we meet again, please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. A good boy. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye